Howdy folks and welcome to your annual War Thunder video, which by my reckoning must mean that we're now in the year 2021, so welcome to the future. War Thunder, still alive and kicking in the year 2021, who'd have guessed? Equally surprisingly, me, still alive and kicking in the year 2021, who'd have guessed that? Other news from the future includes Star Citizen recently passed $1 billion in crowdfunding, in fact, in a press statement just this week, Chris Roberts announced the exciting news of the brand new shopping module to be integrated soon into Alpha 5.0 of Star Citizen, which may be available for alpha testing as early as the second quarter of 2025. So if any of you were getting concerned that you were running out of ways to fill Chris Roberts' pockets, then don't worry, with the introduction of microtransactions into the next alpha build of Star Citizen, new and exciting opportunities to further fund the development of Chris Roberts' private moon base will be available to you in the next alpha build of Star Citizen. In other news, I finally got around to finishing the main campaign of Cyberpunk 2077, and it was fantastic. Seriously, you guys back in 2018 do not know what you're missing. Anyway, back to War Thunder. This is Patch the Otter in his Hawker Hunter. Patch has actually been sending me quite a few War Thunder replays recently, including an absolutely ridiculous game in his P-39 Aero Cobra, which I might show you sometime next year in 2022. But it's this Hawker Hunter game that I'm showing you today, because it contains what is, in my opinion, the best War Thunder air-to-air -air kill ever. I do like the Hawker Hunter. I did a video on this aircraft when it was first introduced into the game... Oh, I don't know, it's 2021 now, so it must have been at least four years ago. There was nothing subtle about this aircraft. It was big, it was heavy, it was fast, and it was powerful. It was not particularly manoeuvrable, but it was fast. It could achieve transonic speeds, and it was powerful. It had four 30mm cannon mounted in a detachable pod underneath the nose. Like I said, if you were looking for subtlety, then don't look at the Hawker Hunter, because this thing was just brutal. And unlike the overwhelming majority of aircraft that were introduced in the 1950s, thanks to the rapid pace of technological development, most of them had very, very short service lifespans. The Hawker Hunter was still in use in the Lebanese conflict of 2007. Now in this battle, Patch is going up against a mixed bag of mostly ME262 variants and Italian G91s. Let's just take a quick look and see what they're getting up to. Here's one of them, G91, who's firmly locked onto the tail of what appears to be another Hawker Hunter. Don't worry, it's not Patch. The enemy team have already opened the scoreboard by shooting down one of the F-80s on Patch's team. And it looks like, unless he can give this G91 a slip, it's going to be curtains for this Hawker Hunter as well. That G91 is locked in tight on his tail. The Hunter's attempting to make him overshoot, and he almost gets away with it, but nope. G91 scores first blood. The Hunter's hit, but it's not out. Although with the G91 locked on his arse as tight as this, it's surely only a matter of time before he inflicts some damage that the Hunter is not going to recover from, and it looks like he just sawed his wing right off. So this is not looking too good, so far at least for Patch's team. There's also one hell of a low-level multiple aircraft dogfight breaking out over here. Unfortunately, the multiple aircraft are mostly on the enemy team. And that MiG-17 has just fallen victim to one of the ME-262s. I think that was a three-on-one. Very little chance the MiG-17 was going to come out of that one intact. Now, Patch is not entirely ignorant of events that have been transpiring to his rear. He's been keeping a close eye on it, but at the moment he's recovering from an aborted pass made at yet another enemy aircraft. And rather than attempting to get into a low altitude turning and burning dogfight, because that's not what the Hawker Hunter is good at, he opened up the throttle and he's gotten himself well clear of any potential danger. He's now turning around to see if there's anything he can do about the survivors of the two dogfights that he just witnessed while at the same time keeping a very careful eye on the enemy aircraft that he missed with his first attack, who has now climbed to occupy a very threatening position above and behind him. Up ahead you can see the smoke columns coming from the wrecks of two of the three friendly aircraft that have so far been shot down. Now matters are not helped by the fact that two of the aircraft on Patch's team are B-29 Superfortresses. Sorry, did I say B-29s? Of course I meant Tupolev Tu-4s. This is, of course, a strong Soviet aircraft design, 
Not a blatant copy of three American B-29 superfortresses that were forced down due to damage or lack of fuel in Soviet territory at the time during World War II when the Soviet Union was neutral in the war against Japan. Oh no, these are fine examples of Soviet design and engineering. High altitude bombers, obviously, as you can tell just by looking here, although to be completely fair, a B-29 and a match with these kind of jets flying at this kind of altitude is probably a lot safer. It's not safe enough though. Oh, that's not looking good. No, that's not looking good at all. And there goes another one of Patch's teammates. Patch, you're gonna have to start killing things, Patch. And there's a ME262 down there who looks like a suitable candidate, but he's well aware of the fact that a Hawker Hunter is closing in on him. And maybe not today. Once again, Patch isn't stupid enough to try to get into a low altitude turning and burning dogfight in the Hawker Hunter because, say it with me kids, that's just not what this thing is for. So what about the rest of Patch's team? Well, how about this Lobotchkin LA-15 Fanto, contemporary of the MiG-15? And in most respects, at least the equal, and in some cases, the superior aircraft compared to the MiG-15. Of course, the MiG-15 was still pretty damn good, and it had the advantage over the Lobotchkin of being easier to manufacture and cheaper to build in big numbers. And those three factors ensured that the LA-15 was one of the last Lovochkin jet fighter aircraft to be designed and built. Nowadays, there are any number of successful MiGs that we can name that are still in service, and not that many Lovochkins. Although the Lovochkin Design Bureau didn't go out of business when they lost their military jet fighter contracts, they're still alive and kicking today, although these days they mostly build spacecraft. Those are some rather big holes in your wings, Mr. Lovochkin, old boy. And that's a rather large number of enemy aircraft that... Yeah... Yeah, I think... Oh dear. Patch, old boy, I don't wish to alarm you or anything, but if you don't start shooting things down soon... Well, it might already be too late. Patch, of course, is fully aware of this. He's also fully aware of the fact that he seems to be attracting the attention of most of the enemy team, now that the enemy team don't have a huge amount to shoot at other than him. Missed the shot at the ME-262, he continues to open the distance, the ME-262 does the same in the other direction. These are not piston-engined aircraft. We're not throwing Japanese Zeros around the sky here. The strengths of these aircraft lie in their speed and their power. And I know I do keep banging the drum about how the Hawker Hunter was not a dogfighter, because it wasn't a dogfighter. But while you may be able to gain a temporary advantage if you're good enough and the enemy pilot makes a few mistakes, by engaging in a traditional dogfight in these kind of aircraft, turning and pulling hard manoeuvres is going to bleed off your speed, and it's going to leave you a sit and duck for any other enemy aircraft that happen to be in the vicinity, and Patch is rapidly running out of teammates, and there are likely to be a lot of other enemy aircraft in the vicinity very, very soon. And while you might be able to win a traditional dogfight against an ME-262 in a Hawker Hunter, the Italian G-91 is an entirely different matter. It was a very light aircraft, it was very fast, and for a jet, surprisingly manoeuvrable. Certainly much more so than a Hawker Hunter. And yep, at least one of the G-91s has just turned up with his dance ticket. Now that G-91's going to be at a momentary disadvantage if he's turning after that failed pass in order to try to catch up with Patch. So Patch is slamming open the throttle, and the Hawk Hunter is nothing if not fast. He was momentarily travelling at more than a thousand kilometres per hour here. And he's now put sufficient distance between himself and his closest pursuer that he's able to start turning, while at the same time trading some of that speed for altitude. Here comes the G91, and got him. But the ME262 is also on the way in, and he's got him too. Well, I can't say I'm not glad you finally turned up, Patch, but I think it might be a case of too little too late. Still, two enemy aircraft shot down isn't bad. Still, where are the rest? Oh, well, that's the enemy airfield down there, isn't it? Surprising lack of flak. Although, hang on, on this map, the enemy team don't actually start off with an airfield, and their ground forces have to capture that one, which would explain the lack of anti-aircraft defences. Oh, hang on a second. Looks like player three just entered the match. Enemy 262. They're both angling for a shot at each other, and neither of them have it. 
262's flown on by. But he was climbing, so he's going to be low on speed. And Patch was descending, so Patch has a lot of speed and is easily going to be able to open up the distance on that ME262 for a second encounter. The enemy team don't have an awful lot left to shoot at at this point. So that 262 is certainly going to be coming back for a second try. Patch has enough distance on him now. Drags the lumbering nose of the Hawker Hunter around. But he's judged it well. He's got the time. Here comes the 262. And there goes the 262. <laughs> so there's kill number three. Um, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Hang on a second. What's happening down there on that very newly captured and almost entirely bereft of anti-aircraft defences enemy airfield? Oh look, it's another one of those pesky little Italian buggers. I'll know the pilot of this one, unless I miss my mark, appears to be Swedish. Well, actually there's more than one. This guy doesn't appear to have noticed that Patch is closing in for the kill, but he has a compatriot who has seen Patch and has just taken off and is coming up to meet him. But that's really bad news for him. And equally bad news for this guy. Yeah, that's probably going to leave a mark. That's almost certainly never going to polish out. Now remember this guy, by the way, even though he only has half an aircraft. We're going to be seeing more of him later on in this video, surprisingly enough. This guy, however, is now the immediate source of Patch's problems. The G91 that took off did manage to score some damage on Patch's aircraft, and his airframe is looking a little the worse for wear. And the Hawker Hunter was a tough aircraft, but with this kind of structural damage you definitely don't want to be pulling any kind of high G manoeuvres or your aircraft is likely to fall apart around you. Now this is a far from ideal situation for Patch. He's got a G91 on his tail, and while the Hawker Hunter is a much more powerful aircraft, the G91 is far lighter. Which means the speeds of the two aircraft are about the same, Patch can't outrun him, and thanks to the lighter weight the G91 accelerates faster. Since he suffered structural damage, Patch can't afford to pull any hard G manoeuvres, and in any case, even if he hadn't suffered any structural damage, there's no way he's going to win a turning and burning dogfight against a much lighter aircraft like this. So the advantages all lie with the G91, and Patch is pretty screwed here. But that does not mean he's not going to go down without a fight. And the G91's got him, and that is where Patch scores the greatest air-to-air -air kill in the history of War Thunder. In fact, you know what? That was so good and happened so quickly, I think we need to watch it again from another angle. Here comes the moment of truth. The G91 has just scored the kill. There it is. G91 swoops on by victorious, patches in a flat spin, still has his finger on the trigger, and the quadruple 30mm Aiden cannon sort out the rest. Oh yeah. <laughs> Six kills for Patch the Otter, although I think we can all agree that the sixth and final kill was worth the previous five combined. Sadly for Patch, however, it turns out that even here in the year 2021, taking out 75% of the enemy team in an air-realistic battle single-handedly still isn't enough to guarantee a win for the team. So in that respect, War Thunder hasn't really changed at all in the intervening years. But we're going to end this episode of War Thunder from the far future, not by continuing to watch Patch's lone surviving teammate as he continues to circle without any bombs while waiting for the jets to come up and kill him. No, instead it's back to this guy, who seems to epitomise the ideal that if you just want something badly enough, the ground crew are capable of repairing anything. I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.